we got a tropical depression in the Atlantic right now. Uh, winds of 35 miles per hour. Tropical depression seven was formed in the east, uh, the eastern uh, and central Atla uh, tropical Atlantic today. Uh, right now, you can see on satellite the storm system uh, rather compact, uh, but very well organized uh, system right now. Uh, very very high cloud tops. Um, a very um, mature starting storm. Uh, mature starting depression here. Tropical depression here. You can see the swirl uh, of this storm uh, as it goes. Uh, you can see over here we got the Leeward Islands. Those are going to be the first uh, uh, islands from this tropical cyclone, uh, uh, tropical system to hit uh, the area. Uh, we're expecting that the storm will um, move across the eastern, uh, uh, move across the uh, central tr tropical Atlantic um, into those Leeward Islands by about 2 a.m. Uh, Saturday. Uh, with winds of about 45 miles per hour. Uh, the system will then approach uh, and make landfall on Puerto Rico later uh, the evening hours of Saturday uh, with winds of about 45 miles per hour. Sunday, Monday, the system will move through uh, eastern Dominican Republic with winds of about 45 miles per hour once again. Um, so, and then uh, thereafterwards, this system could potentially be a impact to... Um, uh, land in the future. The GFS models here showing the system is going to have a rapid recurve uh, off into the open Atlantic toward Bermuda. Uh, that's one scenario right now. The models are literally all over the place with this system. So, like some are uh, calling for uh, that model that that turn into the open Atlantic, and some are calling for a more impactful track into the uh, United States. The GEPS uh, model here has been in a bit more. Um, uh, agreement we, with uh, with what the National Hurricane Center's cone is forecasting, not taking not, not having taking that aggressive turn toward the uh, the, the north here, but a more uh, more slower curve, and that will take it uh, across the eastern Bahamas islands, uh, probably as a tropical storm, and then maybe maybe making landfall on the Carolinas, possibly as a hurricane. Um, tropical storm or low category one hurricane um, by about 216 hours that's more than a, w a week away but then you have all these other models that are literally everywhere uh, thinking that the storm is going to go in all sorts of directions the uncertainty for where this is going to go is really uh, high right now so we don't really know where this is going to go beyond the uh, five day period all we know is where it's it, it have a better idea is where it's going to go on five day go for five day on five day period uh, which is again listed by the National Hurricane Center's track we have three days and then we have five days uh, by five days, it should be leaving the Dominican Republic. And following the way this turns, we should have uh, that um, pass uh, to the Bahamas, and then that that direction would probably take it into the Carolinas. The way this is aimed, I don't think a recurve toward Bermuda will particularly be more likely at this point, unless the National Hurricane Center's forecast uh, here begins to show a bit of a more turn this way. Uh... But that angle uh, would take it a more eastward direction than it would a northward direction. Um, so uh, I have a feeling the GEPS is probably a bit closer to, to being correct than the GFS models right now. Uh, because if the GFS scenario were to happen, we would see this storm uh, not necessarily making a bit, much, that much of a bigger difference in change, but it would be a higher angle. It would move closer to a good uh, additional 20 degrees um, uh, closer to ninety, closer to an upper at ninety degrees, uh, and then that would take it toward uh, closer toward Bermuda. Um, so, but then again, uh, it's really fifty, uh, or close, to, cl not exactly, but close to fifty fifty uh, with this system. So, um, I'll activate the track here. Uh, we can see by um, early morning, September fifteenth. Uh, tomorrow morning, we should see the storm become Tropical Storm Fiona. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, and then uh, afternoon, we're going to see the storm reach winds of 45 miles per hour, gusts of 60. And it's going to very consistently remain at 45 miles per hour, according to this forecast right now. Uh, with, However, with the system is going to be, is, is expected to be strengthening. We may see a uh, slow pressure drop. Uh, if not, maybe getting to 50 miles per hour. But so long as this system uh, heads through the um, 
the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, uh, at that point, intensification should be rather limited uh, because it will be having land interaction. But its point to intensify will be pretty much after it's leaving uh, the Dominican Republic. So sometime after this forecast point, uh, we could see the storm start to intensify, as it, especially as it moves over uh, warmer water temperatures. So we're going to go with the model intensity guidance here for the... Um, right here. So we're seeing most of these models are taking this as a tropical storm for the next week or so. Uh, a couple of uh, the SHIP bringing it to barely to category one by one week from now. The NNIC thinks uh, it is not it is not uh, forecasting as long range as the others. It's not really a long range model, but it's getting to about five days. We're starting to see that increase to um, near near hurricane force. The HWFI has really gone crazy on this one, thinking that by 132 hours it's going to be 125 mile per hour winds. It's almost a category four. Uh, <laughs> At this point, that forecast is a bit premature. Uh, right now, I don't think it's going to be that strong by 132 hours. But um, one model thing is going there, so there may be that there may be that small chance that it could go to uh, to a high category three by then if it undergoes some rapid intensification. But it's more unlikely because, as I said earlier, the system is going to be going through the. Um, so, uh, the Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic, and that's going to limit intensification. If significant, in oops, sorry, um, not that screen. If significant intensification is going to occur, it would probably be after it's uh, headed out of the Dominican Republic. So, um, this this forecast of uh, it reaching hurricane from the category one at eighty four hours, to category two one thirty two, I would. I wouldn't say that this won't happen at all, but not this soon. I would place that 144 to 156, maybe 168 uh, hours uh, instead of it being 84 to 132. I would place it beyond 144 uh, or one be or beyond 156 uh, hours away from now. Um, so. I th particular I particularly think that this, this, this that we may we may see this intensity spike, but not as soon as what that particular model uh, thinks is going to happen. But again, w along with the track of the storm, there's a lot of uncertainty with the intensity, so that's why we have these remaining at strong tropical, some remaining strong or moderate tropical storm to near category one, and we have one going to like category three uh, within the first three or four days. Um, so, if it was going to go uh, 120 miles per hour right there, instead of seeing S, standing for Tropical Storm, by Tuesday, Monday p.m., we would see M right there, standing for Major Hurricane. So, at this point, it being that soon is unlikely, because if it was, we'd see uh, that on the map right now, and we'd know. But, because it's uncertain right now, we don't know. So, uh, again, this system has a lot of uncertainty for if uh, for uh, when and uh, um, when and how strong the intensity will be and also have an inten a very high uncertainty as to where and when this will uh, reach specific areas but as we go over time we will start to see some certainty increase with this one slowly um, right now for the system um, right now there are there aren't, don't see anything on um, <laughs> Um, investig uh, aircraft reconnaissance for the uh, system off the west uh, for for the tropical depression. However, for aircraft reconnaissance, there are there are a couple of uh, missions um, that are en route that are that they're en route right now for a couple of other areas of disturbed weather across the Atlantic. We have excuse me, we have one near Jamaica um, right now. We have uh, an area of disturbed weather near Florida. They're en route for that one uh, right now. Uh, we have um, an area of disturbed weather um, in there's one more in the Gulf of Mexico. There, uh, they're en route to that one as well. Um, looks like they're just um, investigating other disturbances for potential um, development chances right now. It doesn't look like right now we have anything to be concerned about uh, right now. They're just investigating possible areas of interest. Um,
So, um, and I'm pretty sure they'll probably, at some point, as it gets closer to um, the mainland, that aircraft reconnaissance will start getting sent out by the United States uh, and the National uh, Weather Service um, and the National Hurricane Center, probably the National Hurricane Center, actually, uh, for this particular system. So, with that being said, I'm going to give a brief uh, briefing here, uh, a brief briefing, that's interesting, uh, a brief um uh, run here on uh, the other storms. Just a brief little thing here. Typhoon Muifa is uh, moving um, away from Shanghai right now. Uh, we can see the center of the storm is right about there um, at this point, uh, north of Shanghai. Um, it's rapidly decayed. Um, doesn't even look, look like a typhoon anymore, but it is. Uh, nevertheless, 70 knot uh, winds right now. Uh, pressure Central pressure 975 millibars. Um, Right now, so we'll probably see that this will probably see this down, down, downgrading to tropical storm Moefa very soon, and that's going to move off into northeastern, far northeastern China, and then into north, uh, um, into, and, and then into southeastern Russia. Um, Murbach, the typhoon right now in the Western Pacific, uh, it's going to become a rather large one over the next course of the next uh, 48 hours or so. It's a wind field. It's going to is it going to practically quadruple in size, um. Uh, and uh, very interesting to note here that uh, despite the fact it's weakening rapid, uh, rapidly in terms of tropical status, this system is going to uh, rapidly intensify as an extra tropical low, getting to a minimum pressure of 941 millibars or even into the 930s in millibars for an extra tropical system as it heads toward Russia and Alaska. So... That is interesting. A not non-tropical cyclone, possibly getting below nine hundred forty millibars. Normally, you see that kind of pressure in a category high-end category four or category five uh, tropical cyclone, uh, or hurricane, or typhoon. Uh, but in this one, we're going to see it. Um, there's another model. There's another model over here that's going to uh, that that's showing that's going to be a bit weaker, uh, nine hundred forty-nine uh, millibars or so. Um, but nevertheless, this is going to go into the 940s and the 930s millibars uh, as it goes to. Uh, so this is not only is it probably going to have low pressure, it's probably going to have powerful um, winds, more than hurricane force. I wouldn't be surprised if they reach Category 2 or Category 3 force. Uh, Nan Madol, a uh, tropical storm right now, rather uh, impressive system. That is also going to increase a wind uh, increase in terms of its wind field. Uh, right now, we are forecasting that this system will be rather intense. Possibly, some models thinking it's going to get down into the 930s in millibars as well, which unfortunately would take it straight at Japan. This one could be at least a Category Three storm with winds of 120 miles an hour or higher. Um, the GPS is saying something completely different. Probably going to go down to maybe Category Two or so. Uh, and then it's going to drop south, interesting enough, toward a southeast, south, southwestern motion toward Taiwan from the northeast. Hmm. Um, that is interesting. Um, I guess it's an, I guess it's a possibility. I don't know how that would happen, but not drop, not many tropical cyclones in the West Pacific do that. Um, here we go in Invest 94 e in the Eastern Pacific. We have a uh, an area of interest that's going to uh, that may uh, we may see some development chances uh, from that one. Uh, I'm just gonna hit a back backspace there. Uh, we got two areas of interest right now: a 70 and 70 percent, 80 percent uh, for a system uh, tropical depression likely to form in the next couple of days, meandering uh, southwest or south uh, southwest of the southwestern coast of Mexico. Uh, we got an area of interest right now. Gradual, another one. Gradual development of system uh, is possible the next couple of days. Tropical depression could form before reaching the coast of south, southern or southwestern Mexico. So this system probably going to be a landfall on Mexico. Uh, so watch for impacts from that system uh, right uh, over the of course of the next couple of days or so. Um, a lot of disorganized cloudy, cloudiness and thunderstorms with this one. Uh, rather interesting. Um, Excuse me. Um, 95E as well uh, is a system farther toward the west, uh, the one that's uh, closer to the coastline of um, uh, Mexico. Uh, this little spiral we see here, though, could those be bands uh, at the center of the system? I don't know. Possibly. Uh, um, 
but the way the where the surface low is located, it's prob probably is. Uh, that probably is the uh, center uh, right now, poorly defined, but um, it is not a tropical cyclone yet, so we don't expect that much from it. Here we go with the uh, model runs, the GFS track, uh, taking this system, um, probably not even getting below 1,000 millibars with the system, uh, and it's going to make landfall on the coastline of Mexico uh, by about 1,000 by about 1,000 millibars by 72 hours from now. Uh, a couple of orange lines here we see on other models that indicating that the system system would get in the 990 to 980 millibars. That would probably take it uh, as a stronger tropical storm to near Category One um, hurricane. Uh, GEPS thinks uh, something similar here. Uh, 1,008 millibars uh, headed toward the coastline and at landfall. We see a couple of yellow lines here that can 1,000 to 990 millibars. So the GEPS seems to have a bit more uh, agreement with the National Hurricane Center's official track uh, for this system. The model intensity guidance is uh, uh, showing a massive spike in intensity for the system um, from. Um, the next from from twelve hours of now from now to seventy two hours from now, practically doubling or tripling in intensity, um, getting to almost a hurricane, um, and then um, rapidly weakening. Um, uh, excuse me, that is not the right way. They put both green ones over there. Uh, the SHIP is indicating that spike in intensity, uh, the slight drop, and then it's gonna. Probably get to hurricane, then it may get to hurricane strength according to that model briefly, getting to about 75 80 miles per hour, um, maybe 78 um, by about 108 to 144 hours uh, or so. Um, and then it's gonna hit the hit the hit the very 74 73 mile per hour mark, borderline category one hurricane and tropical storm uh, by about 156 hours and then coming back up in intensity. Other models indicating that this system, this system will. Uh, intensify and that drop in intensity um, and the uh, couple other models don't even, don't even think the system is going to become a tropical cyclone of any kind so that is a briefing on that is an update on tropical depression 7 and a uh, general quick briefing here on everything else going on close out all these tabs because I don't need them so um, with, uh, without further ado, let's get to the last part here. We're just going to take a wide shot here of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, yeah, Atlantic wide here. Here we go. Uh, so we can quite clearly, uh, so as soon as it loads, we're going to switch to, uh, so we can quite clearly see Tropical Depression 7 there. Uh, and then we can see the other disturbances that the National Weather Hurricane Center is investigating. The area near Florida that appears to be moving off toward the northeast into the Gulf, uh, into the, uh, the Carolina coastline. Uh, we can see the area of interest down there uh, near Mexico, uh, and then the other area of interest in that little bit of higher cloud tops right there. It doesn't really have much organization to it, despite the fact that it's going to form soon. Might form soon. Uh, we have that surface low uh, near Jamaica. We have uh, the area of disturbed weather in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and we have the obviously the very obvious area of disturbed weather near Florida. Um, moving to the um, eastern Pacific Ocean, uh, as soon as I find the correct um, right here, we got the eastern Pacific Ocean right here, um, showing the general thunderstorm activity along the equator. Uh, a couple of disturb made disturbance even there, over there could possibly get a couple gain some small chances for development um, some tropical development in that one possibly uh, we see the area of disturbed weather it really looks like one system but it really is two because uh, we have area disturbed weather in this area and then we have an area of disturbed weather with the surface low right there um, so um, now we're going to move to the floater images of the tropical cyclones currently active around the world invest 94e. So this is the system uh, that has the 80% chance of development. As you can see, there is not really that much to it uh, right now. We just have a general area of cloudiness and thunderstorm activity across the uh, area right now. Typhoon Luifa, uh, as I've already said, uh, is um, moving out of Shanghai. Uh, you can call it a typhoon. It's a poor excuse for one um, right now. It was very impressive earlier, t earlier this morning, though. Um, typhoon Murbach. Uh, not a very fancy looking typhoon, but uh, it's definitely got the uh, much more clear rotation uh, with this one than the 
Typhon Muifa. Of course, Typhon Muifa is on its way out. Uh, Murbok may still be intensifying, although it's probably reaching its peak soon. Uh, Nanmadol, um, excuse me, um, yeah, I said that right. <laughs> uh, quite clear circulation here. Uh, very high cloud tops indicating intense uh, convection with this system. Uh, and it's twirling its way toward uh, the Japanese islands. See what it looks like in true color here. Um, you can quite clearly, as soon as this loads, you can quite clearly see that perfect spiral. The system is, this storm has a bright future ahead of it uh, for development, uh, crazy, significant development uh, for this one. This one's going to move out to the northeast and become a very mature storm. It already is mature. Not even a typhoon yet, but it already looks like one. Um, very impressive satellite presentation here. Uh, I can already start, I can I already see it looks like an eye starting to form already. Uh, with this system, a very mature tropical storm at this at this point has a very uh, is a very dangerous storm, um, and that's going to be moving um, into uh, Japan over these next few days. Tropical depression seven, uh, producing some very, rather intense thunderstorms uh, right now. Uh, if these were uh, if these were over land and uh, in the uh, United States, I'm sure this would be there would be many uh, many areas consisting of severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings in this system because I'm seeing some really intense thunderstorms over here. Um, very very mature area of disturbed weather uh, uh, in this tropical depression. Uh, 95E here we go. Um, loading. There we go. Uh, we can see that this area disturbed weather. Um, we have a general surface low right about here. Um, it's a bit less obvious in the first few frames, but then we see start some of those bands starting to show up uh, as the surface low develops, uh, and it's literally developing for literally developing a, a stabilized uh, surface low before our eyes uh, in this model run here. Uh, a lot of thunderstorms off the uh, the western side of the storm. Um, Thankfully, that is away from land, though, but it's producing other um, thunderstorm activity, quite widespread thunderstorm activity, that is, uh, along the um, Mexican coastline, uh, right there. Uh, areas of Mexico right there, and I think that's Central America, um, right there, northern areas of Central America. A lot of thunderstorm activity is being produced by this system. Uh, associated tropical storm uh, equivalent force wind gusts may already be uh, getting produced by some of those thunderstorms, so forget the fact that this is not a tropical storm already. Uh, not a tropical storm yet. Uh, but some of these thunderstorms in association could already be producing tropical storm force gusts uh, within this area uh, of disturbed weather. That is all for now.